Hello, this is Steve Coates, Ambassadors for Christ, and uh, Curtis Alexander. We are pastors here at Church on the Go, and uh, we welcome you here today. We've been talking about the world in conflict, and this is the second segment on this uh, particular topic. This is being uh, shot at the time of the Canadian Thanksgiving, so we say Happy Thanksgiving to all Canadians, and of course our American friends will be celebrating it a month from now. We have been discussing the fall of man, that man was created in the image of God according to Gen Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 31. And that again in Genesis 3, 22 and 23 we saw that man has fallen and has come to a place to know good and evil. And as a result of knowing good and evil, he was expelled, so to speak, from the Garden of Eden because God said, man has come to be like one of us to know good and evil. Our original purpose was to only know God. But now that we have fallen to this particular level, we get trapped into thinking, what's in it for me? What's in it for my career, my future, my possibility? Uh, what's the possibilities for me in this business deal and this whatever? And it's become selfish becomes, uh, you know, focused more at ourselves rather than towards God and then towards others. Jesus said that the greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then your neighbor as yourself. It, you know, really, we are to only love others as we love ourselves. So, uh, but it starts with focusing on God. So, the fall... Um, brings us into a place where we are debating what's in it for ourselves, what's our possibilities in our understanding now, our fallen understanding of knowing good and evil. And this knowledge of good and evil from this perspective means that we as humankind know ourselves as something that is apart from God because we have fallen. So we are now apart from God. We only know ourselves as apart from God or outside of a relationship with God. And the result is that we know ourselves only from a selfish perspective, and we no longer know God at all. We're no longer in relationship with God at all. Curtis, do you have some thoughts? Well, I was just going to say, uh, you know, I know, I realize that uh, here in Canada and, and other places, you have to make a living. You have to work, uh, pay the bills, pay the rent. Pay the mortgage, whatever you have to do. I understand that, and I, I think that everybody agrees with that. But yeah. to make that your life focus, there's something more yeah. than what's in it for you or yeah. what's in it for me. There's something more there, yeah. and uh, and uh, particularly in my experience in college, I realized there's got to be more to it than this, and I realized that I've got to get back, to, you know, to. Uh, focusing more on God. I never really walked away from God, but I wasn't as serious as I could be. And then I realized, no, God's got to come first. God's, you know, career and everything else is going to just put it on hold and let God take care of what He wants to take care of in my life. And in everybody's life, really, what do, what, you know, God has called us. Are we hearing the call? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's this, this whole fallen state that we're in has clouded that. Right. God's calling us back up. Absolutely. And that means that we'll have to lay up, down some of those goals that we've been putting in place. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so that's very good, Curtis. So our knowledge of good and evil is therefore a separation from God. There's, there's come a separation. We're no longer in sync, so to speak, or uh, we're no longer engaged. When you think of a transmission, when it's not engaged, it's not that the vehicle's going nowhere, but when the transmission is engaged, yes. then, there, then the vehicle has power through the powertrain to move forward. We're no longer engaged, we're disengaged. Yes. So therefore, there's a separation yeah. between us and God. That means our wheels aren't turning. <laughs> <laughs> the God gear well, is turning. No strength. There's no yeah. strength from God. Yeah. in our lives. Right. We're, we're disengaged, therefore we're on our own. Yes. 
And because we are on our own, we are against God. Right. We can't really know uh, good and evil from God's perspective. We're only getting it from our own perspective. Right. So man, uh, mankind or humankind cannot uh, be, uh, uh, he not, cannot get rid of his own original purpose in God in a sense because God has created us all in his image. Right. We are not necessarily, according to John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, uh, to those who believe, he gives us the power to re-engage, to become the children to of become God. become sons, yeah. But, but if we don't believe, we're not re-engaged. No. We are still disengaged. Yeah. We are separated from God. Yeah. And because we are separated from God, even though we are still a creation of God at this level, yeah. we are no longer operating as sons and daughters or children of God. Right, we're a fallen creation. And until you believe in the Son, Jesus Christ, you will, will remain a fallen creation. Right. But when you do believe in Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. you become engaged. Right. And you become uh, a son or a daughter of God. Right. So in a world of conflict, we need to understand, first and foremost, rather than getting drawn into these debates, you know, uh, ethically speaking, you know, it's all about what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's false, he said, she said, they say, we say. As ambassadors for Christ, instead of getting drawn into those debates, we need to immediately recognize and understand these people are operating from a fallen perspective. And we come back to our text here in Genesis 3, 22 and 23, where it says, Then God, then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God uh, sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So that's the reason... Uh, God sent him out because man was now disengaged and he couldn't have somebody who was disengaged from his own purposes and design operating in the Garden of Eden. Right. And so, you know, uh, if you're not going to be engaged, then he had to set him aside. Now we know that this is still temporary because God's purposes are still in process where Christ is going to come and reconcile us back to God. And we have a way back. The way, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, yes. John 14 and 6. Yeah. He brings us back into that relationship with God. And Amen. Well, I was just going to say, uh, you know, it says in verse 22 of Genesis 3 that uh, unless, now lest he, take, he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. God, uh, you know, it's it's not just God getting angry at Adam and Eve and kicking them out. No. It, it's the fact that God had a plan that already accounted for Adam and Eve's sin. And he just didn't want them to live perpetually forever in sin. You know, right. he, you know he, this life on this planet had to end because it was infected by sin because they were infected by sin. He just didn't want them to live forever in a perpetually sinful state. Right. Therefore, flesh had to return back to dust. Right. Therefore, he didn't. You couldn't have them eating the tree of life until the sacrifice came, Jesus right. Christ. Yeah. And now he becomes our tree of life. Amen. Eh? And, and we are now able to go through Jesus Christ back into the Garden of Eden, so to speak, right. um, spiritually speaking, and, right. and, and literally we're going to live forever. God. Thank God. <laughs> but, but, but see, it's not that God didn't want us to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good. It's not that he didn't want us to eat from the tree of life. It's just that he didn't want us to live forever in sin. Right. So he was having mercy on them, so yes. to speak. Absolutely. Really, because it's a miserable state. Everybody, I don't think anybody will disagree with me. A world of sin is miserable. Right. right. <laughs> we all have our troubles. Yes. But God is putting an end to them through Jesus Christ. Yes. And he's already paid the price yes. for sin. So as an ambassador for Christ, you know, uh, I encourage you now to look at uh, all these debates from a different perspective or from a different angle. Don't look at these debates as, well, I have to set this person correct because they are now, you know, they're disengaged, therefore we need to set them right. No, first of all, you need to first understand that they have become disengaged. Yes. How do we know ourselves is the question. You see, we're disengaged, so how do we know ourselves? Well, first of all, we need to know ourselves 
as our original purpose in God was to be knowing God. But now we are apart from God or we are against God. So our ideas are against God and God's plan, God's purpose. The result is that we are interpreting ourselves according to several things. First of all, we see ourselves now only for what's in it for me, what's my possibilities, what what's my agenda, how can I make this happen. Secondly, uh, we see ourselves and, and all of our purposes, our own purposes or possibilities in life, whether they're good or bad, right or wrong, true or false. Is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Is this, you know, uh, is this uh, going to benefit me or not benefit me and so forth. And thirdly, we conceive ourselves to be the origin now of what's good and evil. It's a degeneration that's going on at this level. Now we are the origin of what's good and evil, not God. And so we we begin to follow our own agenda more than, than God's uh, perspective. So, I mean, when you look around at the culture today, how do you see it? Do you see that it's operating from uh, from God's perspective, or is it operating from a selfish uh, yeah, well, I think a lot of people will agree with me that we certainly aren't living in a perfect world. And, you know, things in heaven are already done perfectly. God lives, you know, He dwells in heaven. And we're on earth. God, Jesus taught us to pray, right. Thy will be done right. in earth as it is in heaven. Right. Why is that? Well, because in heaven, His will is already being done perfectly. Right. Right. We don't have to ask Him to do His will in heaven. Right. It's already done. Right. We have to ask him to do his will on earth because earth is in a fallen state. That's right. It's certainly not lined up with what God had in mind. Right. So, so it starts with you and with me and we, we start to come back into gear with God. We start to come back up. You know, it's, it's not God changing his position to run to us. No, it's us changing our position, running up the stairs or coming back up to his position. Right. Because God was never in the wrong. Right. We were in the wrong. We right. came down. Yeah. So, so now we need to come back up again. Right. And, and we need to surrender, and this is the painful part, surrender those dreams and goals which may not be compatible with God's plan. Right. right. That's the painful part. Right. This is where discipleship comes in. I, in a moment, I'm going to ask Curtis to read, if you will, Curtis, from Philippians chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. We're going to talk in just a moment about how do we regain our memory or our purposes in God. But before we do, let me just come back to how we were originally made in the purposes of God. And this is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herd that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we were created in God's image. How do we regain that uh, separation from God? Or how do we become re-engaged because we become disengaged? We are apart or uh, separated from God. Now we uh, see our likeness to God, but it's from a, a stolen perspective. We see good and evil from our own perspective, not from God's perspective and how do we regain there are three things that I want to share with you as we conclude here at this segment and that is our goal our mind and our mouth we need to re-engage all these areas by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ we need to re-engage our goal to come back into relationship with God
need to re-engage our mind and our mouth with the purposes of God. So the first thing is the goal. Philippians 3, 14, 15, and 16. Yes. And follow hard toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even the same unto you. Nevertheless, in that whereunto we are come, let us proceed by one rule, that we may mind one thing. Right. We are to press towards the prize of the, of the calling, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So there is a goal. Yes. Amen. You know, once we've come into relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, again, John chapter 1, verse 12 said, To those who believe, he gives them the power to become children of God. Once we become children of God, we've been born again, born from above, born anew. We need to press towards the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Any comments? Well, I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, uh, we have this mind in Christ. We need to be this way. This, this is the kind of mind we need to have, is the high calling. Press or follow hard. I mean, the Geneva version says, "Follow hard toward the mark." Right. Uh, That's this the is, goal. Yes, okay. the goal. The goal, and it's, this is not something that we're just casually okay when I get around to it. But first, I want to, you know, and I'm not knocking anything here, okay? But first, I got to get to the, the career. Then I got to get to the to the, the you know have a family with kids. Then I got to have whatever, right? These, there's nothing wrong with anything I've mentioned, but. There is something wrong if that is more important than following hard toward the mark of the high calling. The prize, for the prize of the high calling of God in who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. So, th this is a high calling that is for all believers. Well, if you're at this level, yeah. the high calling is up here. Yeah, the high <laughs> calling is back to the original place. Right you know, it's not higher than where God was originally. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's high, as high as God was. Absolutely. I mean, that's where Adam and Eve were. The high calling is back to the original plan. Right. In a moment, Curtis, I'll get you to read Romans 15, verse 5 and 6. <clears throat> but I'm going to read for you right now 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. And this talks about the mind. We're talking about, first of all, the goal, to get back up to the high calling, and to put our mind, what kind of mind do we need? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16 says this, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. In other words, John 1 and 12 told us that he has given us the power to become, right? So if we can have the mind of Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 2, verses 15 and 16, we have the power to come back into that uh, perfect image of God. We have the power to come back there. And, uh, of course, ultimately, our physical bodies will only uh, be resurrected <laughs> when the Lord comes. So that part of our being will not uh, change until, until the Lord comes. But in the, in the meantime, our personal, spiritual, and um, uh, renewing of our mind, uh, we, can, you know, we can begin to get our mind and our soul and our spirit back into relationship with God. Uh, we'll get uh, Curtis to uh, read from Romans 15, verses 5 and 6. This um, passage talks about our mouth. We've been talking here about three things that we need to re-engage as believers. We need to re-engage uh, to the goal. Uh, we need to re-engage our mind. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And also our mouth. Romans 15, verses 5 and 6. Yes, this says, Now the God of patience and consolation give you that ye be like-minded one towards another, according to Christ Jesus, that ye with one mind and with one mouth may praise God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I mean, this is... Um, this is fairly clear, we are to have one mind, you know, and that means that, yes, 
we'll probably always have our differences of opinion, you know. I mean, we're not always identical in the flesh, and that's fine. No. You know, you and I have our differences of opinion and, and preference and whatever, that's fine. Yeah. But, but when it comes to the high calling, when it comes to the big focus of our lives, we are called to be like-minded, and that like-mindedness needs to come out of our mouths. Right. And how do we do that? Reading the Word of God. Absolutely. Operating by the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. The Holy Spirit comes from God. Amen. And we have the mind of Christ through the Holy Spirit. So we really need to, each of us, individually work on surrendering or yielding our tongue to Jesus. So in conclusion, as ambassadors for Christ, let's recognize people have fallen. When they believe in Jesus, when they come back into relationship with Jesus, they need to have the goal to, the, to press on to the prize of the high calling of God. They need to have their mind, the mind of Christ, so their minds need to be renewed and transformed and they need to put their mouth in gear with glorifying God right only as we glorify God our mouth gets in gear with God's purposes and plans amen right as uh, we get into the nattering of uh, he said she said they say is it right is it wrong is it good is it evil is it bad or good all these things are at this level, but when we begin to glorify God, we come back into the purposes and the destiny that God has called us to. God bless you. I hope you've been encouraged today. So we will go, we will preach, the kingdom of God is here. We will go. Yeah.